Okay, so today I'm just going to go through a little quick start guide <clears throat> to get um, anyone that's kind of new or coming back to the program uh, up to date on some things to know about when you're starting the application and using it. Uh, and then I'm also going to go over uh, some new updates and tips and uh, things that are a little bit newer with the floor planning, uh, adding images to your uh, your scene, uh, like floor plan images, and then uh, creating measurements and labels, different things like that that you can do as well. Um, so I'll start off here just by talking about the um, dashboard page on our site here. So you're going to have some options here just to go over uh, general um, tutorial things. These are, this video here is a good resource to uh, check out the ways that you can kind of basically use the application. Uh, and then we always have updates here, uh, uh, recent updates here that you can look at. Um, if you ever uh, need any questions or anything like that, though, always use the chat button chat button down here on the bottom right. Um, from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Mountain Time, we're available. And then outside of that, you can just leave us a message and we'll get back to you. All right, so then you go to Login. And from here, you'd hit this Play button. And um, from here, it's going to probably take anywhere from 30 to 60 seconds to load. Um, and then that will bring up, after this loads, uh, it'll bring up a sort of uh, login screen where you can create a new login or use an existing login to uh, start the application. All right, and then from there, oops you're going to basically uh, see this page here uh, after you log in. So you'll have your projects and you'll be able to, you'll only have a starter project if, you've, if you have a new account. Um, and I recommend starting with the starter project. You can click it and then hit load selected. Um, if you create a new one from scratch, uh, you're, you're kind of just creating a blank project. The starter project will open uh, a basic room like this and you'll start off in this 3D view. So I kind of want to explain this and how this works. Um, since this application is a 3D application, uh, right now, everything kind of starts in 3D, so you you kind of start in this orbit view here. Uh, usually when you start up as well, there's a little tutorial that you can go through, which kind of goes through some specific features. Um, but in general, this is a 3D application, so it starts in this 3D view. However, you could always go up to your views right here and change it to top view, uh, left view, right view, front view, and so on. So you could do kind of everything from the top view if that's more comfortable to use, um, but it's going to start you in this orbit view here. Uh, and once you get comfortable with using the orbit view, you can kind of orbit around the scene and add things to the scene, uh, which is which is pretty nice and easy to do after you've kind of gotten used to how it works. Um, all right, so that's kind of the basics of getting started and opening the application. Um, so as I mentioned just a minute ago, there is a little tutorial as well here uh, where you can get started and kind of go through some of the, the specific features. Uh, but again, if you have any questions as you're starting up, just use the chat button uh, to get started there, as well as that tutorial video that I showed earlier. I'll just kind of quickly go over some of the uh, layout here as well uh, to, to kind of explain what's going on here. So up here on the left, you kind of just have some uh, typical functions that you'd use for the overall sort of navigation of things. So opening your project files, um, some settings, some shortcuts to see, undo uh, render buttons. Up on the right are more selection things. So you can change your camera views up here. You can save camera views by using this um, button here and creating saved views. And then you have your orthographic camera views, orbit, and then a first person camera view where you can kind of look around in first person view as well. Uh, the orbit view though is nice to use because you can kind of orbit through over your whole scene and kind of look around like this uh, and then move your whole camera around with your AWSD keys on your keyboard. Some selection objects here. So you can select all of a specific type of object by selecting any of these ob uh, uh, types of objects. Uh, and then a couple other options here that we won't get too into. Uh, your markup, which is kind of what we'll go through in a second, where you can create rulers and things to be able to, um, to show measurements. Uh, and then visuals, you have some options to change colors of the whole scene so that you can kind of see things a little bit, uh, a little bit different detail, which is nice to have for, um, for doing floor plans and things. Um, and then you also have the ability to turn on a grid uh, in this contrast option as well, and, and some haze for when you have lights. And then finally, we'll get into these two things here at the bottom. Uh, so you have your images uh, library over here, so you can upload images, and basically any image you want will be saved in the cloud here, so you can always come back to these. Um, and then you have templates, so you can kind of add in templates as you want and play with these. You know, just clear the template out and add in a different one to see if you want it. Um, we'll just leave that there for the moment. Um, and then in these these two sections, so you have the build section here, which is highlighted in blue. And this option will kind of give you a bunch, bunch of guided um, sort of easy buttons, if you will, to basically just type in dimensions of the things you need and it will add them based off the dimensions you need. So if I need a stage that is 
uh, I don't know, 30 feet wide. It'll just kind of add in a stage that's 30 feet wide by 16 feet deep. And I can maybe change the shape of that. And I could change the material of that to something different. I could change the color of it as well if I wanted to hold, hold a different color. Um, we'll go back to this and add some stairs. Uh, and then I just kind of go through these tabs and add what I want. So if I was doing this all from scratch, I would, let's say, add some drapery, maybe change the color of the drape, go and add some screens, maybe change the layout of the screens. Maybe I want uh, some larger screens like this. And I'm just going to move these off to the side here for the moment really quickly. And then maybe I'll add some placeholder content or I'll upload um, some specific content like this. Um, I'll just really quickly adjust. I'm going to click on the drape here, and then I'm going to also shift click under these screens and then change the color of the screens. Or actually, I could just choose the two screens here and try to change them to like a gray so they kind of match the drape there. I'm also going to move the drape up just a tad. Okay. Uh, and then I might just add some rigging real quick. Um, let's say we're going to add some rigging to the middle there. Um, we'll do 90 feet of rigging. I'm just going to move this a little bit lower and we'll say, we'll actually, we'll say that we want this to be kind of um, downstage right here. And then uh, maybe we want some scenery in the middle here. So I'm just going to do some quick scenery and say we want to match the width of our stage and maybe be 15 feet high. Maybe we can move that up a little. And then I'm going to change it to this. And I can go through and add different scenery if I want with all these different options here. I'm going to add some lighting real quick. I'm just going to add a stage wash. Uh, this These Lecos are automatically going to kind of show up in the downstage area in front here, which is where they might normally be placed, but you could always move them somewhere else. And again, I'll do 30 feet, and maybe we'll do 10 Lecos. I'll move them up here. And then I'll change the color just a little bit. And I'll adjust the cone a little bit as well and the intensity and then I'm going to place those lights by hitting them that, that there so that they stay there and then I'm going to add some up lights by hitting this uh, up light button here I'm going to spread those out to be about 90 feet or so maybe 85 feet and I'll do like 15 of these and maybe change the color to a light blue or a bright blue Okay, so I got that, and we'll go back to here, and then maybe real quick I'm going to add some backlights. So those show up right here. I only want, let's say, 30 feet, and let's just do like eight of these. And we'll say that we have some truss back there that's holding those up or something. Uh, and then seating, I'm just going to go ahead real quick and add some classroom seating here. So I'm going to click this classroom seating button. It's going to show a bunch of seating here, and I want to adjust these dimensions a little, so I'm going to say... Uh, Actually, 100 feet looks good. I'm going to say maybe 60 feet deep. Uh, if, it's better if I go to this top view to see the layout here. Let me just adjust this real quick. Um, all right, so I've got seating kind of looks like this. We'll say we want it to be a little deeper. So maybe I want like 70 feet deep. And maybe I just want uh, sections of like 30 feet. And I want these tables to be about 8 feet apart. And 6 feet rows sounds good. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do this, and then I'm just going to duplicate these so that I can create little sections here. Cool. Now I'm going to go back to my orbit view by hitting O on my keyboard or that button. And then from here, I can select all these by holding Shift, and I'm just going to change the color of the um, tables, and I'm going to add some people. Say yes. And maybe I want to show... Oh, I want to them as eight feet and I want to show something on the table okay and then over here I'm going to change this venue um, setting to low so this basically changes the lighting in the room which is just going to change change it to be a little bit lower all right cool so now I got this set up actually I'm going to go back to room if I'm in room here I can change some settings as well so I could change the color of or the um, let's say the ceiling shape Maybe I want this, but I want the ceiling to be a little darker. So I'm going to hit this and change it to be a little darker. And then maybe I want some different floors that are a little darker as well. And some walls that are just a different color. Um, something like this. I don't know. Just playing. Just playing with it. And then I'll adjust the lighting again. Okay. And from here, 
Um, so I've just kind of set up this really quick uh, design here. I'm gonna move this a little bit lower. Um, and now what I might wanna do is add some individual objects. So maybe I, from here I want to, um, by the way, if I orbit around, the ceiling will kind of disappear here. So you, you don't have to, it doesn't get in the way. But from here, maybe I want to add some audio real quick. So I'm just gonna drag in different specific items. I'll add that there. I could also go to my top view and just do it here. Maybe I'll just duplicate this, add it over here. And maybe I also want to do some speakers that are hung here. So I could go to my front camera view and place these speakers in a specific spot. I'm going to duplicate this. Cool. And so that looks like that. What else do I want to place? Um, maybe some chairs and stuff on the stage. Um, uh, I could either drag in some of these chairs and duplicate them like that. Um, or I could go over to people here and there's a little templated people here that I could add, which I might just do real quick for now. And now those people are there. And then I think if there's anything else, if I want to go into decor and do a lot more stuff with decor, I can go into this section and I can change it by the brand. Um, and then I could add in specific objects. So maybe I want to do like a big scenery column over here, kind of add that in. And then if I say, if I select it, go back to my orbit view, I can see it over here. I'm going to zoom into it. And I might go ahead and like change some of these panels. So I'm gonna drag over some of the panels there. And then I'm gonna change the panel to something different. So I'm just gonna drag in a new one, do something like this. And then once I've got that the way I want to want it to be, I can just select it and duplicate it. And then move that over to the other side. Cool, okay, so that's kind of that. Um, and from here, uh, what else do I wanna do? Um, yeah, from here I could add in any other specific items like cameras and things like this, uh, maybe extra projectors that you want to hang for something, um, maybe a TV for something as well. So yeah, so from here you can kind of go ahead and do whatever you want. Um, so now that I've shown you this, I wanted to go over a couple things with kind of adding some floor plan information, some measurements and stuff like that. So from here, uh, we can go up to this markup button and click on ruler. And uh, this will allow us to kind of make some measurements of, of things and label some things. So we've made some recent updates with this. We're trying to make this a little bit better as it's it's been an okay feature, but um, there, there could be uh, a little bit more to it. So some things that we're doing, I'll show you here. Um, so if I create a measurement, um, let's say I want to just show the distance of the room here. I'm just going to click and drag this ruler and we'll say it's right here. So we'll say the room is 120 feet. Uh, so now I have this red line with the measurement above it. So it's just basically a measurement there that, that shows you the distance. Uh, and then maybe I want to make some measurements of, um, the distance between, let's say the back wall and the scenery. I'll do that. And then maybe the back wall and the stage. So I'll do that. And then maybe uh, we want to see about how far this truss is away from the wall. And then maybe we also wanna see how long the truss is. It's about 90 feet. Okay, so we got those measurements, not too many, but just a few to show what's going on. And then if I wanna make some labels about some of this stuff, um, I can go ahead and hit this label button. And basically a little label will show up here with a little um, box on it right there. And you can just select the box. It's really small, but you can maybe select the box um, and move it around. So I could say the stage size is blank. Um, and then maybe make a couple more labels to say um, venue room name is blank and more info here. Cool, okay, so those are just some updates as far as what the measurements and stuff can do uh, right now. So you can you can add some information there and then when you're ready to kind of print this out, uh, you can use this look or sometimes what I would do is change the color of this. Uh, you have this option which just kind of shows a base color which is kind of nice because it just shows um, the base color of everything without lighting and that sort of thing which is a little bit easier to see sometimes. That would look something like this. And then you could also change the color to like a blueprint or like a white and black look, which might help as well. So 
Uh, and finally, what you could change to is the resolution settings here to very high, which will just allow you to see the lines a little bit more clearly when you're creating render. And so after that, you're gonna hit render. And then when you're in this top view, you'll have this uh, third option up here that says render measurements. So rendering in 4K and in HD is just gonna show basically all of the lines and everything, uh, all the objects, let's say, um, but it won't show the numbers of the measurements, if that makes sense. So, so what you're gonna do is you're gonna create a, a rendering first um, and then create a rendering with measurements second. So you would render out the uh, 4K or HD version first, and then second, you would render out the measurements. And so those will kind of show up as, as two separate uh, images that you can then overlay on top of each other. Uh, so if you need inf more information on any of this floor planning stuff, um, just reach out, you know, uh, if you're trying it and something isn't working or if you have any questions, um, we can definitely help you out uh, as quickly as we can. All right, thanks. Sorry for the long video. And uh, yeah, let us know if you have any questions. Uh, eventrender.com if you want to just check out more information on the website.